And so, you know, we're here to talk to you tonight about function, flowing, and gifts of the Spirit. And I want to tell you how easy it happens. It happens as easy as you being here. Amen. You don't have to have some special acts of great, you know, deeds. <laughs> some kind of lengthy period, of, you know, on trial to make sure that, you know, you're the right fit for the company. You know, it's just going to, Papa just going to give you the wonderful Rabosta Predea, Gis in the day of the Steritona of the Holy Ghost, simply because you're willing to receive and just because you hear, amen, the smearing is here tonight. Hallelujah. The anointing, in other words, is here tonight. The oil. Hallelujah. If I go over here and I grab some of this oil, and, uh, you know, this oil here, I hope it ha if it's not just olive oil, because olive oil doesn't smell that great. And this smells good. This is a special kind of oil. This stuff's got smell on it. Good smell. And it's very oily. Can you see that? You know, it's real oil. It's not fake oil. <laughs> fake oil is not oily. But I'm telling you right now, if I just basically go by with this, you know, you don't have to, there's not going to be a lot of effort. There won't be a lot of effort. You won't have to, you know, really hope, uh, you know, that somehow... You know, you get it. It just, it's just on you, you know. It just, I touched you, and it's on you. And you know what? It's on you, and it's going to be on you, and you're going to smell it tonight. You'll have to actually go wash this off. Huh? You just get, ar no, you just get around the stuff. Smell, smell that? Smells pretty good, doesn't it? This is the way the anointing is. You know, the Lord didn't come and pour out his goodness upon a bunch of people that deserved anything. He didn't do that. He didn't do it that way. Huh? He came and gave all the riches of heaven. He came and gave all the riches of heaven. Huh? Smells pretty good, doesn't it? Huh? He came and just gave all the riches of heaven to anybody who received. Now, if you've got to earn it, if you come from a denomination, you've got to earn it. <laughs> he, the Holy Ghost doesn't, he doesn't get a chance because he's not sent to those who are earning it. True. He don't come to those who earn it. He come to those who just receive what has been supplied. It smells good, don't it? Huh? Doesn't it smell good? It smells good. I'm not putting some old stinky, not nasty stuff on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Mangeshe. Manoshe. Bereshita. Huh? That's the way, that's the way the gift of, to the gift of tongues is. You see, they all gathered together in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. There's a rushing mighty wind, clothed in tongues, came set and rest upon each one of them. And they all were filled with the Holy Ghost, which is the same equal. Somebody said, what's the difference between being filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in the Holy Ghost? Nothing. So he said, are you sure? Absolutely. Huh? Because in one of the few short verses of Scripture, it smells good, doesn't it? When a few, few, hallelujah. And it's going to stick with you. In a few verses of Scripture, Jesus says, remember, what John said, you'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not, he, I baptize with water, Acts 1-5. But you'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. And then he says, Acts 1-8, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you. And you should then be able to give, provide testimony that I'm alive. At that moment, you'll be able to provide testimony that I'm alive. Huh? See, Acts, and Luke chapter 24, verse 48 says, oh, go tarry in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. You see the promise of the Father and endued with power from on high. And so, I mean, this is God's program. People want to make a difference. Religion want to make a difference. Church want to make a difference. Philosophies of men want to make a difference. Traditions of men want to make a difference. Yeah, who cares? I didn't, I didn't sign up for philosophies of men. I could have done a lot better things with my life. And I am. But so, I didn't sign up for traditions of men. I signed up for the glory. I signed up for what Christ Jesus did for me 2,000 years ago, 1971 years ago, at Calvary's cross in a place called Jerusalem in Israel. And there he, he offered up himself as the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, uh, Isaac said, Where, where's the Lamb? Hallelujah. <laughs> Isaac said, where's the Lamb? John said, behold the Lamb. Yeah. Amen. Huh? Yes. Isaac said, where's the Lamb? Genesis 22, 8. Um, um, John said, Behold the Lamb, John 1, 29. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who offered himself without spot or blemish. 
What is that first first Peter one twenty or one nineteen? Ha tekushima tareya. Hallelujah. Ha worthy is the Lamb. Revelation five twenty nine. So that you and I could have the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The inheritance. You know what? Somebody said, oh, you know, I received an inheritance. And because I received an inheritance, I have an authority or I have an ability. How much authority do you have? Well, how much ability do you have in that inheritance you got? Well, I got $10,000. $10,000. You're not going to do much. Huh? You don't have much authority at all. Nobody's going to pay much attention to you. Go buy yourself a new TV or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Somebody said, well, I got... 10 billion. Ooh. Now you, may, you may actually have some inheritance that's going to result in some kind of an authority, some kind of an ability to bring some kind of a change, to bring some kind of respect, to bring some kind of, make some kind of a difference. It will. 10, ten trillion dollars will make a difference in the world. Anybody who's got it, they're making a, they're basically calling the shots. <laughs> you know, the Lord gave to us an amazing inheritance as the sons of God. We're sons of God. What people don't understand is that God started a new race in Christ Jesus. He started a new race. When God called Abraham out of a very wicked realm, a very wicked place called Ur of the Chaldeans, a place in southern Iraq, modern day Iraq, southern Iraq, he started a new race when he said, Come over with me and stand on the other side of the flood. And thus he called him Irit. Irit is a Hebrew word for Hebrew. Hebrew, a Hebrew, a Hebrew, or really a Ezri, is a person who stands on the other side with God, separated from all the rest of humanity. A new race was born that day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We call them Jews today. And when Christ Jesus, praised the name of the living God, poured forth the covenant, he also, as, as the means of the covenant and being supp supplying the covenant provide a way for us to be born of the word, to be born of God, to be born of the spirit. Hallelujah. To be born of the very, hallelujah, the seed of the word. Hallelujah. <laughs> a new race where Papa, almighty God, becomes our father, Jesus, our elder brother. Hallelujah. And then, and then, and then, and and then, and then, hallelujah. And if the church would just do what God has called us to do, I mean, we would actually be the healing balm, healing ointment for all the problems and all the division and all the issues in the earth. That's who God's made us to be. We're, we don't. We aren't that because we're idiots. We aren't that because we're stubborn in our religious tradition because we want to have it our own way because of arrogance and pride. But if we humble ourselves and submit ourselves to the things of God and the way he designed it, the way he ordained it, you know, that's why people say, how can you go and, and minister to the Pashtuns in the Kashmir Valley and not threaten for your life. Because I'm filled with the boldness of heaven and I've got, I've got heaven. I, I, I have all authority to go everywhere and preach the gospel because I stepped into something called the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We understand how the God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. We understand the heavenly vision. Jesus said to Paul, I'll give you the ability to open up the eyes of the blind. That removes the darkness. That removes the blindness. That removes the inability to understand and know God. I give you the ability to turn them from Satan to God. Not ask them, turn them. <laughs> the church abdicated its power when it got all integrated with the world system. The church ab abdicated its power when it began to believe doctrines of devils and doctrines of men that made it powerless by bringing it into bondage to the worldly system of sin and iniquity and demonic interaction. So, I mean, praise God, you here and you, and you, you believing for something different to understand the Word of God as the Word of God is presented. You know, today I was just trying to help people on Facebook to say, listen, dear people, if you read three chapters of the Bible a day, you'll read through the entire Bible in a year. That means in a decade, in 10 years, you will have read through the Bible 10 times. If you don't start doing this every day, you won't read through the entire Bible in the next decade, one time, once. 
And I mean, if you just simply read the Bible, just if you had to have it, and I'm going to tell you the will of God for you right now, it's God's will that you start reading the Word because that's the only way the Holy Ghost can reach up and smack you and tell you to be different. Stop believing what you believe in. Don't listen to what's being said. That's not my Word. I'll obey my Word. Here's my Word. Now, it's just as, you know how long it takes to read three chapters? It doesn't take, if you've had any time reading, it doesn't take long. I mean, come on, right? Give me a break. And this three times in the morning and three times in Three chapters in the morning, right? Yes. How long, how long? You can eat your, you can like eat your breakfast. I mean, a bowl of cereal, three chapters is done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Instead of sitting there staring at the, what, the bo box of the Captain Crunch cereal, or whatever it is that you're doing, just, just start applying yourself to something that is spiritual. And so to the Spirit, and you reap the life of God. You reap everlasting life. Jesus is personified as eternal life. Understand that. When you read that verse of scripture in Galatians chapter 6, I understand verse 7. I understand Jesus is personified as eternal life in 1 John 1, 3. So, you know, understand that. That when we talk about if you sow the Spirit, you shall the Spirit reap eternal life. We're really talking about the whole dimension of the life of God, the life of the, of the Spirit, the life of Christ Jesus, which is the heavenly life, which is the realm of life, which is the life that it calls you now to begin to function in miracles, signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Haripa. See, it's just a very demonstration that the Holy Ghost is here. Somebody said, can you demonstrate the Holy Ghost is here? Absolutely. No problem. Just the atmosphere. I was just meeting with Mike. Mike said, you know, I had a number of different diseases, sicknesses, problems, pains and stuff in my body. He said, when I first came here, he said, it's like, it's, it's, it's wild. Because every time I come to get prayed for, I take three steps and I'm healed. And he was talking about the arthritis. He had an incredibly arthritis in his hands, uh, 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 arthritis in his neck and other things. And it's because just the anointing's here. Now the anointing's not here because there's any special person who's here. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is here because of the generosity and the benevolence of Almighty God who through Christ Jesus poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost wherever the church is. And this is the church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. It's, it's praise was started by God. This church was started by the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. Amen. Yes. Amen. They've given uh, Father lots of opportunities to shut us down. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he just keeps resourcing us and building us up. Amen. <laughs> In our most holy faith, praise God, we keep increasing with the increase of God. And so this is what we have, and this is for you. This is what Father has done. All you got to do is recognize what he's doing. If you agree with him, if you agree with God, you're going to get what Father said. You know, I, I tell people this all the time. I was in the largest city of the, of, of the world, Tokyo, Japan, 27 million people. And the tallest apartment, the tallest building they have on the 47th floor. Talking to the Lord about, he needed to do, he needed to do something more in Japan. <laughs> because he looked very small in Japan. He woke me up at 5 o'clock in the morning and said, oh, authorities give me in heaven and earth and I'm looking for somebody to agree with me. You know, because we could agree that, Father, your, your authority is in heaven, but I've been looking around and analyzing things and based upon my statistical analysis and based upon my, you know, keen perception and evaluation of things, I say that you're not, that you don't have all authority in earth. Because why if and why that and why the other thing? Well, that's just your lack of understanding. And my lack of understanding, my unwillingness to agree with God, thus I'm not going to have his results. And so I'm going to have to cast down that logical, rational thinking. The Greek word is logismos, logismos, from which we derive the English word logic, which then most of your Bibles, King James, for example, would have translated that imagination in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down logics, rational thinking, far different from the unredeemed, unregenerated mind of, of, of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, or Romans chapter 8, verse 7. I could go on, but that's not the subject. Versus the spiritual mind, the mind of the Spirit, the mind of Christ, the mind, hallelujah, of spirit knowledge. Spirit knowledge speaks to a rock and the water still comes out. Now you try to logically figure that out. Now you need logical, rational thinking for driving home. We'll leave it there, okay? <laughs> hallelujah. You need, <laughs> you need, <laughs> oh, right. Pasinea, to do some of the things that you do your job. But when it comes over into spirit knowledge and interacting with God and agreeing with Him, He's taking us to another realm. You didn't learn this in school. 
You didn't learn this in the, in the rational Newtonian or uh, physics or even uh, uh, quantum logic. And, and that's weird. <laughs> There's a few people in here trained a bit in quantum logic. That's just strange. That's some strange thinking. And some people think that way in order to, you know, you got to have to some think that way to solve some problems, right? So there, most people can't solve those problems because they don't know how to think that way. We can't solve divine problems because we don't think like God. People aren't willing to learn how to think like God. I mean, some people go and we sit in crazy, crazy, crazy classes, right? Like physical chemistry, quantum mechanics, etc. To learn how to think in the most unrational way <laughs> to be able to solve very complicated problems, huh? And we give such great effort to that. Years and years of study and passionate discipline. And yet we don't want to come and learn how to cooperate with the Holy Ghost and spirit knowledge. But spirit knowledge is say to the sun and the moon, don't move, I'm not done yet. Oh, my goodness. All he had was the spirit of the Lord. All he had was Moses come and lay hands upon him. God said, lay your hand on him. Well, Moses went in, doubled it, put both hands on him. Huh? Got, got the good smell good on him. Hallelujah. Because it is an unction. It's a smearing. It's an anointing. Hallelujah. It's an oil. It's represented by an oily thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh. The Holy Ghost is called the oil. He's called the oil of gladness. God anointed Jesus with the oil of gladness above everybody else. I know what he anointed Jesus with. The Holy Ghost in power. You know, see? So... Just a synonymous type of way of describing what God gave to Jesus. And so listen, if we begin to start thinking and, and, and understanding what God would do, and he just by laying his hands on, uh, just by laying his hands on, uh, Joseph, what, I'm sorry, uh, Joshua, what, hallelujah. Oof. Joseph got it too, but okay. <laughs> but Joshua, Joshua received said, what did he receive? He received what? Spirit of wisdom. He received the spirit of wisdom. Woo! -hoo. Hallelujah. Jesus came, look at here. Jesus came with the spirit of the Lord, with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, with the spirit of counsel and might, with the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Ha ha ha. Hallelujah. That's what he came with. Let me say it again. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2. He came with every dimension, every, the full dimension of every, di every, every part of all the display of the power of God. Listen to me. Listen, li listen, folks. Listen to me. Okay? So, we, we have, understand this. Get, get this. Get with me on this. Get with me on this. And it's a free gift. Amen. And that's the hardest part. That's the high. I know. I lost everybody there. I lost everyone there. I lost you. I lost you. Gone. You gone. It's up. It's done. It's done. Because uh, uh, you can't get, you can't receive that free gift. No, it's not that simple. Yeah, it is that simple. No, I got to earn it. No, I got to work. No, I got to do something. I can't just be, I can't just awaken with your likeness. Yes, you can just awake. You just can wake up with his life. God wants to wake you up. <laughs> well, I tried to wake up and nothing happened. Well, you didn't wake up right. Let's, we want to shake you again. Bubba wants to give you these things. Look, it is not a, it's not a divine caste system. It's not just like, there was a period of time where the God could only anoint just certain people because of the dimension, the spiritual dimension of things before Christ Jesus broke the yoke of sin and death. Hallelujah. He anointed Aaron to be able to come and stand before him and minister in the holies of holies. He anointed Elijah to be able to proclaim his word. He anointed Saul, give him a new heart that he might have the authority of a king. I mean, on and on. But now, the Lord has poured out his anointing upon all flesh. He's poured out an anointing that results in sonship anointing. Listen to me. Sonship anointing that is very difficult for people to agree with because the sonship anointing makes you heir, the heir of God. What's your inheritance? I got what God got. You do. Yeah. Galatians 5, 4, 7. I've got what God's got. Romans 8, 17. I've got what God's got. John 16 and 13, I got what God's got. God, the Holy Ghost, has come to transmit everything that belongs to the Father to me. Amen. And to you. Amen. It's not a divine caste system where there's just a couple of people who were born with the intellect. Now, if you are a, a Haredim Jew, 
which is all Orthodox Judaism, Haredim. And out of that, there's various different sects of Orthodox uh, Judaism. You might believe, then, that it takes a superior intellect to be able to grab a hold of these things in God. A superior intellect that was born with the qualities of righteousness above other men like Isaiah. That's hogwash. That's nonsense. No, God comes and brings his Holy Ghost and gives to us a divine ability. Forget about gene human genetics. Forget about intellect. Think about it with me for a moment, moment, dear people. The Holy Ghost has come and poured out all the glory of heaven on anybody he wants. Hallelujah. And people say, I want, but then they want, they want demon stuff too. I, want, oh, I like you, God, but man, there's just a lot of stuff over here that I'm really into as well. Uh-oh. That's, that's going to make, that's going to, that's going to blind you. That's going to, that's going to work. Maru. Huh? Maru. Do not be a maru. Huh? From which we derive our word moron. From an Arabic derivative. It's Greek usage, but an Arabic derivative. Maru. Don't be a fool. Are we saying? King James really diluted it. Said, don't be unwise. Oh, that's very <laughs> kind. Moron is far more impactive. Don't be a moron. But be wise, knowing what is the will of the Father. Redeem the times, for the days are evil. Don't be sipping on the alcohol, imbibing demon spirits wherein is every kind of iniquity or debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now you say, woo, this is a gift, this is free. Yeah, but the Holy Ghost, He is going to yoke you. He will yoke you before and yoke you behind. And then that's good, I like that. And He'll set your hand, His hand upon you, Psalms 139, 5. Oh, this knowledge is too high for me. Huh? So if you work with horses, there are not many people in here who do that. Or you work with oxen. If you, you, you can yoke them before and behind. You can, okay, some of you have been around horses. Halter them, eh? You can halter them from behind and you can steer them. You can halter and, and you can lead them out from in front. Isn't it great that fathers come, come move in our lives like that? See, the new covenant, he would cause us to walk in his ways, to keep his judgment, to keep his statutes. Huh, we won't depart from him anymore. That's, of course, that's what, Jerem that's what Jeremiah knew. Hallelujah. That's what Ezekiel knew. Hallelujah. That's what Paul referred to in, in Hebrews 8, 10, Hebrews 10, 16. Huh. He's written his ways upon our mind and upon our heart. He has established his word. Hallelujah. So that we would do them. See, there is a salvation where you clean escape all the world. And you're so caught up in heaven, this is it. Now you live in an inheritance, inheritance, man. Now you've got a place where you're no thirsty no more. Huh. Whew. You've got a wellspring springing and rivers of, of the expression of the very life and power of God flowing. And this is where people compromise the whole thing. This is where they get a familiar spirit instead of the word of knowledge. Because the word of knowledge is different than a familiar spirit. The word of knowledge has, is about the, about the knowledge of the holy. It's about, it's about spirit knowledge. It's about the knowledge of God. Word of knowledge is only found one time in the Bible. That phrase is only found one time in the Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, taking notes, I believe it be verse 8. The words, pluralizing word, the words of knowledge found twice in the Bible. Um, Proverbs um, 19, and I believe it's also Proverbs 22. But the knowledge of God, who that's found over and over and over again. I don't know exactly how many times that phrase, knowledge of God, or to put together a, a, an indication or a reference to God's knowledge or God's understanding or God's wisdom. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's clearly in excess of a thousand times. It's, 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 there's a lot. I just never, I've never searched that out to be real specific with it. But it, it, it is a lot. And, and so, really, the knowledge of God is, is really what logical and rational thinking 
as you're taught in a, in a, in a purely human realm, is contrary to. Hmm. It's not contrary to on the level as you would describe it in, sec, in 1 Corinthians 1, or forgive me, 1 Corinthians 2.14, the natural mind, the unregenerated mind, or the, mind, or the fleshly mind, the unregenerated mind of Romans 8.7. People don't get it, but that's, Paul's just talking in Romans 8 really about what Jesus said in John 3, 3 through 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. The flesh can't come into the kingdom, can't know the kingdom, can't function in the realms of the Holy Ghost. Huh? You know, it, it's, it's really conceited legalism that believes, let me say it again, conceited legalism that believes that we can walk with God and please God without the Holy Ghost. They that are in the flesh cannot please God any more than without faith it's impossible to please God because the faith brings forth a new heart that's born of the Spirit, a new life. That which is born of the, uh, that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Praise God, Paul says, and we're blessed. You know, that which is, that those that are in the flesh cannot please God, Romans 8, 8, right? Huh. But we're blessed because we're not in the flesh, but we're in the Spirit, Romans 8, 9. This is a gift. This gift. People running around, I mean, you know, I remember people, get yeah, different ministers coming and and being in meetings where they say, oh, is there anybody holy here? I'm trying to throw this intimidated, intimidation tactics upon the church. Yeah, right over here. Everybody looks with a persecuted eye. Huh? Yeah, I received a gift of holiness. Oh, hallelujah. I received a gift of righteousness. Praise God. Woohoo! It's all found in Christ Jesus and what he did for me. He gave me a gift of holiness that I might learn how to walk in holiness. He gave me a gift of righteousness that I might learn how to walk in righteousness. He gave me the gift of the Holy Ghost that I might learn how to function in all the character and nature and splendor and majesty of the Heavenly Father. What a blessing. Why should I want to be like the devil anymore? Why should I want to walk around like a de demon spirit anymore? Why should I want to live in strife and hate and variance and emulation and lust of the flesh and lust of the eye and pride of life when I've been given an opportunity to step into the realm of divine power and the realm of divine glory and he, according to his divine power, has given everything that I need to walk in this life and godliness. By his divine power, he gave me everything that pertains to his life and to his godliness. I'm amazed at how the the world knows more about what ungodliness is than the church. The world knows more about what lasciviousness is than the church. It's crazy. We, we, we don't, we, we don't, we're not able to see. You can't see until you begin to live by and rely on first born of, then live by and rely on the Word of God. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. See, there is the Spirit of the Lord. There are the fruits that the Holy Ghost produces, and there are the fruits that the Spirit of the world produces, and God demands that you walk in the Spirit. And if you've been made alive by the Holy Ghost or you live by the Spirit, you're now supposed to move with the Holy Ghost. Ha, ripa, sante, hikinapa. You're supposed to move with him. You're supposed to, he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Our spirit's been made one with him. Ha ha, how free gift. What is that going to do? Change everything about you from the tip to the toes. Ha ha, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ha, from stem to stern. And this should be good news. This should be good news. To some people, this is bad news. I mean, you gotta, I've got to change. I can't live in lust and hate no more. You mean I can't, be, I can't be wrong with God and be right all at the same time? No. It's like the old preacher said, real simple. He said, can't live wrong, die right. Pretty simple. You're going to have to learn how to live right. Huh? You were born in sin. You were shaped in iniquity. Every day, shaped to be just like a devil from hell. Just like a fallen angel. Mm -hmm. Of course, fallen angel, that word is not actually used in the Bible. God just refers to fallen angels as the devil and his angels, which from which we then derive a concept. Huh? Bandoleo, si pocona, ashipera. Now we've been born in righteousness. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Born again. Hallelujah. Born from above. Born of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. To now be taught of God. To be taught of God. 
And with that, he's poured out this glory upon everyone who's willing to receive to where that you just get a mantle of divine presence on your life. You get so filled up, with a wellspring starts bubbling up on Jesus on the inside. Jesus said, Jesus talked about salvation. on the. T- I'm, not, I'm interested in the salvation that Jesus talked about, not men. Jesus said, I got something for you to drink right out of the realms of heaven. And you'll never thirst again. You'll never thirst for the world again. By application, you'll never thirst for the world again. But you will have a continual wellspring springing. Hallelujah. Hamande, Katora. Anibo. Anabo. Isipanea potoya. Huh? That was a little bit of tongues and Hebrew together. Nandeshe kero pungi. Hahari tipana. Tok stiknak ste. Renepaka. Hallelupahosi. Hareneke. Living on the inside, providing for you everything that your heart, your soul, your mind, everything that you desire spiritually. You, you'll be so filled, you'll be so full, huh? so filled up, you have room for nothing else. Yeah. You don't want anything else. When you begin to enjoy the pleasures that is in his presence, the pleasures of the world it, uh, are foul. They grieve them, they vexing, they death. They death has a rotten, rancid smell. A rotten, rancid smell. Smell of death. Huh? It's not hard to say no to that. That rancid, bloated, stinky, popping open thing. Are you listening to me? I bulging thing. There's nothing pretty about death. I'm afraid America's going to be seeing way too much of it in the not too distant future. Nothing pretty about death. People choose death. Wages of sin is death. You sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap that kind of corruption. Praise God, but by the divine nature, we escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. And now we get to give all diligence to add, hallelujah, to our faith virtue. Virtue? Yeah, it's splendid, it's beautiful, it's glorious. It's where God the Holy Ghost talks to us. I, you know, there's a number of different things that I would like to minister to you tonight, and I'm on track on one of them. But, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do a school of spirit next week as well because I really just want to spend a lot of time with you about understanding the difference between Eli and, and, um, and Eli's son, Phineas and Hophni, and... Samuel. And understand what God did in mentoring Samuel, because he gives us plenty of intro, information on it, so that he would raise him up to be such a faithful priest that he would not allow one of his words to fall to the ground. I mean, to just begin to have your meditation in the Word of God, to begin to live by the Word of God, to begin to actually process based on the Word of God, not upon all your other thinking and all of your other ideology, but you know what? There's a price to pay to process by the Word of God. You have to give yourself continually to the study of the Word of God. Yes, you do. And we're going to just do our very best while we're in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting in remembrance of these things. Yes, praise God. He has written His Word upon the tables of a heart and in our, in our mind that we may do them. But you've got it. And the Holy Spirit is here to lead us and guide us and teach us and transmit everything that the Father has to us. But you've got to open up the Bible and begin to read its spirit in his life. Jesus said, John 6, 63, the flesh profiteth nothing. It is the spirit of God that makes alive, that quickens, that gives revelation, that gives understanding, that gives knowledge. The words which I speak unto you the spirit in life. It's not black ink on white paper. They're not concepts. It's power in life. It's living. Hallelujah. Oh, Bate. By the same, the, it's the thoughts of Almighty God. It, it's, through, it's, by the, the, it's by the word, by that means of the word, that all the universe was created. The expanse of all the heavens were created, you and I were formed. The living word showed us and personified to us the written word and said, come, walk in the word. Come, live in me. Come, dwell in me. Come, abide in me. This is what the anointing teaches us. Once again, the Holy Ghost here is called the anointing in 1 John. In chapter 1, verse, what is that, 28, I think. 
It is, the Holy Ghost is called the anointing. You don't need anybody to teach you what the anointing is evidently put forth before us. Nobody should be able to steal this knowledge from you. You're supposed to be dwelling in God. Hallelujah. You're supposed to be living in Jesus. The Lord spoke to me not too long ago. He said, I want you to travel to the churches of America and I want you to tell them to receive. It's time to receive the life of Jesus. What an interesting thing to go and say to the churches in America. Within two months, my calendar so filled some of the major churches in the United States of America. You know, I said, told, I told, I told Ann, I said, listen, we're going to try to, you know, we're not, Father, we're not limiting you, use this word, but we're just trying to go one week a month, and that's just totally out of hand now, to be able to just go one week a month. Now it's two weeks. So, but we're going to let, let Father do it, because there's got to come a change. God didn't raise up government to deal with the social and moral evils of society. God raised up the church. Yes. And no arrogant man going to make America great again. <laughs> church of the Lord Jesus Christ make America great again. Constitution was created to work only as a church was vibrant and willing and consecrated to walk in the ways of God. It doesn't work in the hands of evil men. That's why it will capitulate. That's why it will disseminate. It will just erode out from underneath us. Evil men will change it and misinterpret it. We live under, we live under a supreme dictatorship where there is no representation, the Supreme Court. And I could go on and on. But we have the power to change that. We've got to get, we got to get out of all of our, our mentality. The church has no, has no force of God's will being expressed. And that's changed with spirit knowledge. When you begin to live by the word, when you begin to process by the word of God, everybody's running around trying to get saved, trying to get redeemed, trying to get a renewed mind. That's all happens when you get regenerated. Look how Jesus defines salvation. Look how, look how Paul defines salvation. Saved by the washing of the water of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Titus 3, 5. I mean, we've got a different definition. I'm, I'm telling you. If you just look back at the church, if you look back at the church, 80, no, 60 years ago, there was changes taking place 60 years ago, though. But you can look back at the church 60 years ago because those who were leading the church, especially in the Pentecostal movement, had a sense of holiness. People born in the Pentecostal church, I say things like this, the Pentecostal church moved the Holy Ghost to the back room, now you can't find them there. And people who are born in this age and in this generation, the millennials, they didn't even relate to that. They're like, what? We got the Holy Ghost here. <laughs> if you go back 60 years ago and you compare what you have right now, he's gone. If you go back, somebody said, can you give me references? Absolutely. F.F. F. Bosworth, Mariah Woodworth, uh, any, anything, any writings on the holiness movement, uh, Fraudstrom. I mean, the list goes on. There's plenty to read, to see and understand what the holiness movement looks like. What happened when the holiness movement, the pre, predated Pentecostal movement of the holiness movement, which expresses the holiness of God without holiness, no man shall see God, the holiness which is, which is the expression of the spirit of holiness, which also can be understood as the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit brings spirit of holiness. Jesus was shown to be uh, the Son of God by the spirit of holiness. And so, we, you know, we drifted. We, we drifted way off course. Way off course. We're over here. God's over here. we over here. And we set, our, we set our chart, we set our compass on the wrong destination. Because we we're, we're still willing to be conformed to the world. God said, now be transfigured by the regenerated mind, by thinking different. Hallelujah. By thinking according to his word, by living by his word. You know, Jesus overcome every dimension of everything that Satan could throw at him by basically quoting Deuteronomy 8, 3. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. He had all knowledge. He could have said, he could have said something that would have blown all of us away. Sometimes I'm fascinated with myself when the Holy Ghost gives me a revelation and I speak out something and go, wow, this is great. I mean, Jesus could have given us something really, really great. Yeah. And he just quotes Deuteronomy 8, 3. And he continues on, just quote scripture. Hmm, wonder what he's trying to tell us. Wow. Yep. We need to get a genius in here. 
And you get somebody with superior intellect to help us understand. No, you don't. You'll be converted. Become like a little child. Because it's the simple that it's revealed. To just begin to imitate Jesus. Let me, just, let, me, let me say this. You know, I've got, I've got so many topics running through my head right now. But I'm going to try to get over here and just center around Ephesians 6.10 for just a little bit for the remainder of the time. Rather than talk about the doorway into the fullness. There's, an, there's a way, there's a doorway, an entryway into the fullness of God. And the simpli and I got to say something about it really quickly. The simplicity of it is mind-blowing. It is mind-blowing. And the opportunity is for everyone. That you may know with all saints what is the height, the breadth, the length, the depth. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and by it, and by that, and by doing that, and by hooking up with that, step into all the fullness of God. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and thereby being filled with all the fullness. Look at that. Is that easy? That easy. Fullness of God. Heir of God. co inherit with Jesus. Sons of God. We don't live as sons of God. We don't, we're not even in this political process right now. We're not even... We're not even praying as sons of God. We haven't set out what are the most important things. The tyranny of the Supreme Court that has legislated same-sex marriage, which will be ultimately used as a tool of persecution against the church and a means of tyranny to call unrighteousness righteousness, to call evil good. Because in California schools, people, elementary school, man and man, woman and woman, woman and man, Elementary school student has to look at that and go, they're all equal. That's now stepping out into another realm of participating with so much w w evil. That needs to be repealed. I don't care about no stinking Obamacare. Give me a break. Forget about that. I mean, get to that sometime later. Look over here. Hello. Who's got principles that are defined to us by the Word of God? Who lives by the Word of God and is calling it by what is most important? We kill how many millions of babies a year? Slaughtering them. And the Supreme Court has no right. Talk about taxation without representation. Give me a break. And we, we, we led the church led back then. Don't tell me my, my ancestors are there. The Dyers, the Drakes, the Christmans. They were there. Your ancestors were there. Your ancestors were against some of my ancestors because <laughs> they were Puritans and we were Quakers. But nonetheless, we had the upper hand. Hmm? Think about it, people. We don't anymore. We, we, don't, we can't even get together on the issues. We all ups. We, you know what the church is doing right now? Think about the spiritual state. The church wants to round up a bunch of immigrants, six million Hispanics, imagine the impact here, and, and put them somewhere. What does that look like? And we're like, woo, yeah, praise God, hallelujah, let's go kill a bunch of people in the Middle East. That's us? That's who we are. That's nuts. That is absolute insanity. Yeah. And I, you know, when I started de 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 just, just crying out and decreeing what would happen if we went on with the unholy war and our invasion of Iraq, so many people persecuted me. You know what? I, we had, I saw in visions and dreams Saddam, Saddam Hussein being saved. I wasn't the only one. There were other people in Iraq who had the same dreams. I had a revelation from heaven. Saddam had already met with several ministers starting in 1998. He was being softened. He's being softened. He was giving us permission to do a mass evangelism crusade in Baghdad in 2002. So my mind is kingdom of God. And over here we got this warmongering stupidity going on. Because we're thinking like the world. There's no spirit knowledge. But yet we go to our churches and we raise our unholy hands to worship God after sitting down, fellowshipping with devils. Well, that's just seared. You can't move in anointing that way. You can come up with a familiar spirit that way. You can come up with some unholy ideal born out of the pit of hell that way. And all I can, I'll tell you right now, 
devil can do some tricks. He's a master of deception. He can do some tricks. You look in the book of Revelation at what the false prophet, the signs and the wonders that the false prophet is going to do, and there's false prophets today. And ultimately, it really comes down to the fruit and the evidence of the Holy Ghost in their life, the fruit of the Holy Ghost. And it's specific, it's specific, clear, objective evaluation of the Word of God that doesn't need an intellect to interpret it, but a simple, childlike person to recognize that this is what the living Word does and everything that the written Word does is about the living Word. Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21, because Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It's written of me. In other words, behold, I come from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21, albeit the New Testament hadn't been written out at that time. It was still there. You understand? Hallelujah. Katananeshi. We have to change. We don't have the moral stamina. We don't have the moral will to stand up for what's right because we've compromised already. We got people writing worship songs with, with, with a, a beer in one hand, you know, a couple of joints in the back pocket and a guitar in the other hand. And then we all singing that nonsense. And no one has discerning of spirits to recognize this isn't even out of heaven, man. This is not even out of heaven. This is out of the mind of men. And coercion, coercion, coercion with demon spirits. And then they come out and they say, oh, the God of the Bible is the same as Allah. That is just, that, that is so offensive to the Mideastern thinking. Both Christian Mideastern thinking, huh? And Judaism. Are you listening to me? Yes. Muslims have no problem with that. Man, they just got you. They just took you because that's a demonic realm anyways. They just took you. No, absolutely no, no etymol etymological no linguistics derivation can in any way. I mean, you've got to be, you've got to have a third grade education to derive some kind of a linguistic connection between Allah and Elohim. And especially Yahweh, which is the name of God, the Father. In Christ Jesus, the Word, the eternal Word, His messenger. So we have, to, we have to understand, if you, if you, you had better be on guard. Because unless, you're, unless your mind should be corrupted, darkened again. Here God's giving you light, quickened you, giving you an understanding, giving you the mind of Christ, giving you the mind of spirit. Hallelujah. But now, lest as the serpent beguiled Eve, so your mind's now being darkened, corrupted. Huh? should be turned from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. It's a good read. Second Corinthians chapter 11 is a good read. Huh? Because it's preaching another Jesus. It's preaching another Jesus. He's, Paul's talking about the, pre the preaching of another Jesus that looks just like the one he was preaching, but he said, oh, it's not the same Jesus, it's another Jesus. It's happening now. There has to be somebody who's going to be get, step up and start, con, a people that are going to step up and start contending for the faith that was once delivered unto saints. And guess what? God, here comes the millennials. The millennials are coming. There's going to be a people that are going to raise up in the day of his power, his people should be willing. God's going to shake a people and he's going to begin to raise up the people who's going to stand strong in the word of God. They're going to know the word of God and they're going to stand strong in the word of God. It's happening. It's happening with great giftings, with unwillingness to tolerate all this other stuff that people have compromised in their life and allowed sin and iniquity. And then I'm, I just believe other people are going to get encouraged and stay, say, you know what, I'm going to be on God's side too. I'm going to quit making room for demonic spirits to be able to influence the outworkings of my life, the very movements of my members. My members are supposed to literally be weapons of righteousness. See, this is the most important thing about moving in the gifts of the Spirit because this is what the gifts of the Spirit is all about. The most important qualifier is that you overcome even as he overcomes, that you defeat Satan at every point. I write unto you, young men, because the word of God abides in you and you defeat, defeat Satan at every point. I'm going to talk to you next week about this, uh, this engaging with the word of God, this processing and thinking by the word of God, not processing and thinking based upon what we learned in school and all the things and the disciplines that we were well trained in, especially those of you that are sitting in here that all went all the way to doctorate degrees and received a full lobotomy. <laughs> and the Lord came and worked a miracle and helped us. Praise God. Huh? Because it wasn't about that stuff anyways. Huh? 
Has God, has God raised enough of people to say at every point, no, it's wrong. It's, not, it's, it's the knowledge of men. It's not the word of God. Oh, well, you didn't know. You didn't. No, we do know. Yeah. Made better grades than you did too. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> no, just, just, just shut it down. Just shut down. Just shut it down at every level because intellectualism is an, an angel uh, that belongs in the company of demons of the devil that rules right now in the Western world. Humanism rules in the Western world. Humanism is so integrated with the gospel right now, huh, that it's another gospel. It is. And feminism. Yeah. And somebody's going to be, somebody's gonna have to step into some spirit knowledge to deal with it. First and foremost, you can't be under its power because if you is under its power, you have no authority over it. Even though God has given us the gifting to be able to whatever we bind on earth should be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth should be loosed in heaven. And that, wasn't just to, and that wasn't just an apostolic authority of Matthew chapter 16. That's a church authority of Matthew chapter 18. Go read it. Go read again. Go study some more. Go look again. I mean, we need to give all attendance to making our election, our calling and our election sure. Because if we do these things, we won't even stumble. Hallelujah. We'll defeat Satan at every point. I write unto you, young men, because the word of God abides in you, and you've defeated Satan at every point. He that overcomes, even as I've overcome, sit down with me in my throne, even as I sit down with my Father in his throne. I mean, look, it's the overcomer. That we, we, we know those who have a false spirit, and those are a true spirit. Many spirits have gone out into the world. False spirits, false prophets have gone out into the world. Here's how you know the difference between the lie, the false, and the truth. We, it's, it's, it's those who have the greater one living on the inside of them and confess the greater one. Huh? If the greater one's living on the inside of on the inside of me, then we can then understand Matthew. We can then understand First uh, John chapter five verse eighteen. It says, "We know that everyone is born of God doesn't sin." Now we don't say it that way. Here's how we quote it: They knew that everyone that is born of God does not sin, but they keep themselves, and the wicked one cannot touch them. They knew that. They had that walk. They knew that relationship. They were on that path. They lived in that gift of holiness. They lived in that gift of righteousness. Now, it's God's trying to call us to turn back. People are talking about a great awakening. No great awakening is going to happen until there's a revival. And no revival is going to happen until there's a turning back. Go look at the process. It's outlined very clearly by Father. You've got to turn back. You can't, can't have a revival to continue doing what you're doing. It's not a week of meetings. Huh? And then maybe if it's a really exciting, things are happening, will extend to two weeks, once a year. And there's some progressive churches that does revival meetings once a quarter, and does rarely extend. It's not that. It's saying, we're going to turn back to what God's called us to be, to, to a consecrated life, to come out from among them, hmm? and touch not the unclean thing. And then I will receive you to understand that we are not of the world, even as he's not of the world, that the world is an act of hostility against him, that the world is enmity against him. And come on, I mean, think about these things, okay? This is... First and foremost, moving in the gifts of the Holy Ghost, having the gifts of the Holy Ghost manifested in your life, it, it, it's easy. It's resonant. I mean, I, I mean, I used to listen to people like T.L. Osborne and others, you know, and, and, and my dad and others, you know, being raised in the church and being in two, three meetings a day, seven days a week, being, you know, in the, in the, in the throes of what God was doing in the United States of America in the 50s and in the 60s, especially in the 60s, because I was baby in the in the 50s. And to watch the turn of events and listen to everybody talk about the turn of events. I was there sitting at the table and all these men of God are talking about these turns of events in the 70s and said, what's happened? What's happened? A wave of rebellion and iniquity. Some were saying it's the apostasy. They could just sense it. They could feel it because they just come out of a glorious Holy Ghost revival fire of the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s, and the 50s. They said, what's happened? This is... What's happened? This is a, the conviction is gone. Where's the what, Holy Ghost? I mean, literally. I mean, that's what was going on. That's what was happening. We've drifted. We need to come back and begin to understand what consecration is again and what sanctification again is again. We've got to redefine. No, we're not going to redefine. We've got to have defined to us what the Bible calls worldliness because we don't even understand that. It's, not, it's, a, it's, a, lost, it's a lost, it has a lost meaning. It's a word that doesn't even mean anything. 
Worldliness? What's that? The world knows more about what worldliness is than, what we do, than we do. We're so integrated with the spirit of the world and we've compromised ourselves and that's why that there's not the outworking. But I was going to say, T.L. Osborne and others just say, look, look, I don't even have a gift of healing. It's just here. It is. It is just here. It's just resident. It's resident in his church. It's here. But if you've got all the rebellion and the strife and you've got all these other influences going on and the criticism and the sedition, people are so under the influence of, the, of, of demon spirits. They look at a person and they don't immediately fall in love with them. They immediately start criticizing them. They immediately start saying, oh, suspicion is there. See, the Holy Ghost has never had a suspicious moment in his existence. But demon spirits author suspicion. And that's what goes on. We've got to be willing rather to learn how to love people in the first three seconds. What I want to learn how to love people in the first three seconds I meet them. No matter how weird or obnoxious or crazy or whatever they are. I just want to love them like you love them in the first three seconds. So I'm not fashioning myself after the course of this world. Though that, so that I'm, I'm, I'm being conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. Are you listening to me over here? See, these are the most important things. When you look at what is the most, look at the, I want to talk to you real quickly about the greatest anointing in sonship that is possible. To have the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. You're going to tell me Satan's going to get something over on you. That. Look, so, here, here you are. Here you are. You made a new creation given by his divine power, given everything that pertains to life and godliness. Spirit of God, Holy Ghost has made you, lives on the inside of you. You're his temple. Christ Jesus and the Father has come to make their dwelling on the inside of you. Okay, are you with me? This, already, this should be done. We should be done. Now. But we're not done. Huh? <laughs> Baptism of the Holy Ghost. Well, oh, no, Holy Ghost is not only with you, but he's, on, with you, but he's also in you. Okay, I already said that one, but I didn't get to with you. Okay. Hallelujah. Now he comes in and baptizes you in the cl glory cloud of his fire. And all, listen. All Job had was a little old hedge. And look what the little old hedge did for him. Satan couldn't touch him with a little old hedge. However, God says he's perfect. He's tamim. Tamim is a Hebrew word that is without blemish. He's perfect and upright, righteous. He's ecstatic. By God's definition, ecstatic. Ha! Huh. My, 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 my. Hey, little old hedge. Huh? We, new heart, new spirit. Born again, divine nature, new man, new creation, hallelujah. Holy Ghost living, Christ Jesus living, Father come make his boat. Woo. Holy Ghost alongside of us, leading us, guiding us, hallelujah. Ha. Hallelujah. He's yoked us from before and he's yoked us from behind, hallelujah. And he's put his hand upon us. I mean, it goes on and on. Now he's baptized us in the Holy Ghost and fire and says now, have my strength and my power and my might. And we can't get over, what? You, what is, what, what was it that you can't just live without? That you've got to do it every day? And now there's this false doctrine that we're all unrighteous and that we're professional sinners. Birth right out of a demonic realm. Easily, I mean, just let somebody sit down or even stand up. I don't even care. Or even, I don't know, hang from the wall, whatever. And just give me one minute with such a thing. I will, I will rip it to shred. It's not even in the Word of God. It is not even the principles of the Word of God. Not even close. It's taking a mishandling, something that was declared in Psalms 5 and Romans chapter 3 and completely wrestling it to own, but one's own destruction over at the expense of the Lord saying over and again concerning those who now believe with righteousness in their heart. Amen. Hallelujah. And being made the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. And being given the gift and reshaped in his image and likeness after righteousness, true homes. And it goes on and on and on. But it's the wrong kind of thinking. And in the wrong kind of thinking, with another gospel, with another word, there's no way we're going to walk in the power the Father has afforded us as his sons. There's no way we're going to manifest in any way this beautiful, glorious, wonderful work of grace that has made us the sons of God. We have to think different. We're going to have to come over here and start doing it Father's way and believe what he says and, act, be, and begin to understand how to participate with an anointing in obeying his word. Hallelujah. Did you know that fear of God is very important to God? It's very important. Because, I, you know, I referred a little bit ago to Genesis chapter 22. You know what the Lord said? When, when he bound, he bound hand and foot Isaac to the altar, put him upon the wood. Bound the, bind the sacrifice of the horns of the altar. Huh? That it does not move, that it is bound to, its, to the word and to the oath and to the covenant. Hallelujah. 
And then whatever is left after it is slain, let the fire, cons let the fire of God consume. I mean, think about it, you know. That's where the great revival of September 28th, 1904, Evan Roberts, that was birthed in his heart. Oh, God, he just started praying a prayer as a young man. Oh, God, I built the altar. Father, I've laid the wood in order according to your word. Sacrifice is ready. Send the fire now. He prayed that prayer one too many times. <laughs> he prayed the prayer the number of times as it were. And one day, the power of God came, September 28th, 1904, and rocked the nations of the world through one man's consecration to the Lord. Come on, think about it. Huh? And look at what the Lord says. And he says, and, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took a hold of the knife to slay the young man. And the messenger of the Lord spoke out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, Abraham said, here am I. He said, stretch not forth your hand upon the lad. For now I know that you fear me. Huh? The fear of the Lord. It's part of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the anointing that Christ Jesus manifested in full that it's available to us. Remember? Remember Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2? People, this is where the great exploits of God are found. These are the people who know their God. This is relationship with God. This is the righteousness that Abraham attained by his faith walk when after through much faithfulness and through much obedience, one great final act, as it were, God said, now, surely blessing you. He said, because of this act, hadavira, Hadavir, from which we derive the word dabar or word. Hadavir, from this great act, from this act, surely blessing you, I shall bless you, and multiplying, I shall multiply you, and your seed, singular, shall be as the stars of the heaven. Ha, ha. And as the sea, as the sand upon the seashore. Ha, ha. And he, singular, shall possess the gate of his enemy. Now go read Luke chapter 1 and hear the prophecy of Zechariah. But that's another subject. Bound the days to Hush the kingdom of God. People, we're gonna to have to come over into the company. We're gonna to have to come stand on the other side over here. We're gonna to have to come over here and understand that our conversation is heaven, our citizenship citizenship is in heaven, that we're seated in heaven, that we've been given a divine and heavenly authority, that we've been empowered by God to walk in the strength of the Lord and the power of Him. Finally, brethren, in conclusion to everything that I just so, said to you, which is the crowning epistle of Paul. It is the crown jewel of the epistles of Paul. No, did he never speak in loftier words concerning the divine nature and our oneness with Almighty God as he did in, the, in his epistle to the Ephesians. And he said, finally, my brethren, in conclusion, this is what it's all about. Be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. That's a whole lot of divine power and divine ability. What can stand against the Lord? What can resist the strength of the Lord? What can resist the power of his might? There's four Greek power words there, like all heaped into one verse. It's like Paul's thinking, by the Holy Ghost, and he grabs every Greek power word, stuffs them in there. He said, everything that belongs, I could say this in another way, everything that belongs to the power of God, have it. Every dimension of, of his divine power, of the almighty power, of his sovereign power, have it. So that you may take unto yourself his whole armor. Why? So you can deal properly with spiritual wickedness in high places. I pray in the name of Jesus tonight that the idea of you walking in Christ Jesus and walking in the Holy Ghost and living out the Word will be more important to you than anything else. That this great anointing of God, this is a God anointing, hallelujah, that you can increase with the very increase of God in your life. That there's a place where you can step in to the fullness of Him that filleth all things. And that's who the church is supposed to be. I was in preaching to house church leaders in China in 2001. It was a place I was smuggled into in Henan province in Nanyang. Brother Yuna be here next month, by the way. Uh, month of, he'll be here in March. He's from Nanyang. And in fact, he sent me. So all the house church leaders, are, all these house church leaders are there 
many of them battered and bruised from their last police beating, some of them recently out of prison, all under the threat if ever caught in such an assembly. Again, they'd either be killed or put in prison for the rest of their life. I'm preaching away. All of a sudden, I saw a military guy stick his head through the window. Power and the anointing of the Lord came upon me. And I said, God has given him a name that is above every name. Not in this world only, but also in the world to come. And has made him head over the church. The church which is the fullness of him that filleth all things. Which is greater than the People's Republic of China. It's greater than the United States of America. That is greater than any government of men. The church is far above. Hallelujah. We just, Hallelujah. Went, ahead, we just went ahead and preached the word to them to break off all their, you know, whatever was going on. Let them tremble under the word. People, we lift up, we'll lift up the word in the face of the threat. Somebody said to me, how can you go and minister to the Pashtuns? They're the te Taliban fighters. There's 40 million of them. 40 million Pashtuns. They believe that they are the descendants of Ephraim. That they've been in exile since 760 B.C. They can trace by their, own, by their own stories all the way back to when they were kicked out of Israel by God. Huh? And Ephraim, they're the fighters. That's why Pashtuns are radical fighters. Part of the reason. They're fighters. They're just, huh? They need Jesus. How can you go preach the I've got the strength of the Lord and power of his might, man. I have been given authority to go into all. I've been given authority by the Almighty God to go into every nation, to preach to every creature on the face of the earth. I've been given authority to speak His word on His behalf and watch Him do the work. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ha. The one who has all authority. I can have the whole armor of God. I can take into myself the whole armor of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I mean, in 2000, I mean, we, we just, I mean, I've just lived this thing out. In 2000, and people, some of the people that are watching by the web know about this. But and some of you maybe just know about the place. But Mbaba, no Westerner could go to Mbaba. The Lord told me to go to Mbaba, lay hands on 300 prostitutes who had just recently been saved so that they would receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Woo-hoo! My assignment. My assignment. Mbaba. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, I was dressed fully like a Westerner. I would know, I had no, no disguise on whatsoever. I walked down the streets, Main Street of Mbaba, and no one saw me. They didn't, because they, if they would have seen me, they would have like, they'd have been upset because that's where all the radical, that's where all the radical Muslims came from. They was part of the bombing of the World Trade Center. It's true. Mbaba, Mbaba, Egypt. It's where all the radical leaders are. The radical leaders of the Muslim Brotherhood. They didn't see me, because otherwise they'd have been on me. They'd have been, they'd have been harassing me. What are you doing here? Whatever. I was on divine assignment. I was cloaked by the Holy Ghost. Oh. Holy. We, we, can, we can go do this. All we gotta do is just simply want to live out what Christ Jesus assigned us to do. He's assigned us. You gotta quit making it up as you go. He decided, he gave us, he gave us. It's ours. He took the, he said, I'm going to take the kingdom from you, Israel. And I'm going to give it to a nation that will bring forth the fruits of it. And he made us a holy nation, a royal priesthood. He made the church, hallelujah, the very vehicle of the kingdom of God. We under divine assignment of the highest authority that exists in the universe. People, I always want you to get so bold in God that you deal with the temptations you deal with the sin, you deal with the threats, you deal with the fear, you deal with the iniquity. Come on. This is where you want to begin to use the wonderful anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Listen to me. Hallelujah. The Spirit, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by your own human ability? And no way. Having begun in the Holy Ghost, you made perfect by the Holy Ghost. He's come to lead us. He's come to guide us. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody in here, anybody in here, any kind of pain in your body? Any kind of harassment going on in your head? Huh? Oh, um, my left knee hurts whenever... Is anybody else? Your pain's going. Anybody else? Anybody got head pains? Headache? Right there? Okay, pain's going. Because the anointing's here. God's healing's resonant. It's gone. Thank you. Headache? Who's got, who's, anybody dealing with migraine headaches? Just, just anybody have, anybody got... Anybody was pain in their head, in the back of their head, and the ear, just you? Somebody, in, you're watching by web right now, can you feel the anointing? Can you feel the masateo? Can you feel the masateo? 
Sitasta Gdiksti. It's just like Talitha Kumi. Sipandaleya. Bechitukaniyasin. Hallelujah. And all the pain goes now in Jesus' name. Anybody else have any kind of pain in your body? Hmm? Anyone? Just check yourself. Head? Huh? You know, I, I looked over there and I, I, was, I felt sure that it was you. You know, but I was waiting for some volunteer. I was telling, it's, it's being healed right now. Yeah. But I was waiting for some information. You know what? When you are supposed to give information, God doesn't give it. Mm -hmm. I can get revelation, I can get knowledge about things. But if it's your responsibility to give me that information and you're doing it on your own, you know what I'm saying? Yes. God says, no, you're supposed to tell you. They're living in a vacuum over there. You know, they're not submitting to things. They're not agreeing. Are you listening to me? Yeah, there's, there's certain things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just praise the Lord. Amen. I praise God that all the power of generations of Hinduism is broken off of you. Buddhism. Well, a modification of Hinduism. More animism in it. More animism. Hallelujah. Ruthiana. Ruthiana, she's six years old. I mean, this is how easy it is. Ruthiana, because she lives in anointing. She just lives in anointing. Lives in, hallelujah, just lives in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We don't live in sorrow and sadness around our house. She's six years old, and the guy never called me before. This particular guy had never called me before. And I didn't even know she knew his name. The guy's name was, he used to be a preacher. His name was Gabriel Hammonds. Phone rings, and six-year-old just bounces around the back seat. She goes, that's Gabriel Hammonds. I pick up the phone. Hello. Hey, Mark. It's Gabriel Hammonds. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it's, it's, I'm just trying to say the things are the giftings of the Spirit and the working of the Holy Ghost is easy. I don't necessarily have to talk about how to move in them. I just got to tell you what's per, try to prevent them, try to run a blockade, try to hinder you, try to stop you, try to shut it down. Just live in the Learn how to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Yes. If you just learn how to enjoy it. That's all Daniel was doing. Look at him. He wasn't... A, he wasn't doing all these things people call intercessory prayer, and it's not intercessory prayer <laughs> at all. Something else. He was just get, he would just get he would just fall down on his knees three times a day and begin to praise God for all the good things that God was doing. He just didn't learn how to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You feeling better? Huh? You feeling better? You are? You, right. Just a small little bit? Small accident? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I love India so much. I was, I told you I was only going to go to the God in Nepal. It's all changed. Now they got me, now one of, the, one, of the, one of the people on parliament has got me all over the nation. Oh, you're coming. How many weeks do you get to stay? So we, thank you, Lord Jesus. I just see, I, I, I just see a great, See such a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost in China and in India. And it's not to take out N Nepal and Bhutan because it's the bridge from China to India. And the majority of the human race sits there. By 2020, the majority of the people on the planet will be there. when you combine India and China. There's over 200 million Holy Ghost-filled Chinese, and the church in India is alive and well. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I, I just met with, and I believe Emit is, is watching me right now, and it's a Hindi deriva derivation, I believe, of 
of amen, a truth, rather. And um, his dad has about 800 churches, just so full of the Holy Ghost, just so, so, so beautiful to see what God's going to do there. And people, there is so much that Father still wants to do through this nation. Praise God for all the seeds. Huh? You know who went and gave his life for India? We call him Pray and Hide. Pray and Hide. He went to India and he began to just pray, lived his life praying, crying out to God for all of India. What great seed. There's so much. We're going we're gonna to go do some stuff. We're going to go, we're gonna go, we're gonna go to the nations that haven't been penetrated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go to the places where people are afraid to go. Amen. Father's given us an open door. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so, you know, just be excited. Just enjoy the presence of the Lord. Just enjoy, enjoy the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. Enjoy walking around in the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just enjoy living the life. Don't live a lie. Live the life. Amen. Just lift those hands up towards heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Thank you for the Holy Ghost and power. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you hear that your rain is falling in this place, that your glory is in this place, that every person in here stands up in the mighty and wonderful glory of your power and of your mantle and does great exploits in these last days. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that every person in this place is a candidate for you to do great things upon, on their behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody just stand with me for a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Stay calm, Listen, one of the things I want to do is if you recently given your life to Jesus, I want to baptize you. Or if you've not been right walking with God and you had, you've been backslidden, you've not been living right, and you come back, say to the Lord, I want to baptize you. I'm baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 So just let me know. I want to know because I, you know, I want to get that done. As soon as somebody says the water's cold, you, don't worry about it. You won't feel it. You don't feel it. Amen. If you will participate with the Holy Spirit, you will feel the glory of heaven continue. The manifest presence of God will only get stronger in your life. One of the many ways that we participate with the Holy Ghost is just loving people. Somebody said, I'm not good at loving. Well, practice. And as you do, as you practice, as you practice, as you step out and get out of whatever it is that you're in, okay, and you just walk up to people and you hug them and you look them in their eyes and you tell them, I love you, bless you. Just hug them. Maybe you're not good at looking at people in the eyes. Maybe there's somebody <laughs> like that. As you participate with God like this, and I'm going to talk about this next week, as you begin to proclaim the word, as you speak the word, the presence of the Lord will come upon you so strong. And the more the opposition that you have against you, and yet you define the situation according to God's word, dear people, I'm going to tell you right now, you listen to me, you will begin to enjoy a manifest presence of the Holy Spirit that will completely redefine for you a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. And I want you to enjoy this. I don't want to be the only one enjoying it. I don't want, I don't want just a few people enjoying what Jesus paid for them to have and that they have come to receive and somehow they haven't stepped in. Okay? So I want you to find a bunch of people around you. 
Hug them, tell them that you love them. Bless them in Jesus' name. If there's anybody in here, you've got any kind of sickness, any kind of disease, any kind of stronghold going on in your life, any kind of pain, I'm here to pray for you. The Lord will touch you. I promise you, because he promised us.